Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. So glad you're here today because I get asked about contour on a daily basis. I feel like it can be very scary for some people and especially trying a new product like mascara, you might not know exactly what you're doing and it might take some troubleshooting, but there are so many ways to contour there's no one right way. So I'm going to teach you today the basics about where to place it, um, a few tips and tricks about all things contour. So a little bit about detail contouring, and I'm going to show you seven ways. I think it's seven, seven different ways using different tools, because I always encourage my girls, to try more than one way. You never know what way is gonna be your favorite until you try them and you experiment and you find your favorite. So I know my favorite after two years of using this makeup um, and lots of trial and error, but I wanna show you how each tool makes a difference and some tips and tricks on how to ap apply depending on how you're doing it. And I'm gonna show you also all the colors that I can, seven different colors at least. So if you wanna see how I do it, my face looks very blah and flat and lifeless. I only have highlight on right now and I'm gonna show you how I sculpt it out and add dimension and the beauty of contouring that you don't need to be afraid of it. So keep watching if you wanna see how I do it, all my tips and tricks. Like this video if it helps you, I love to know. And don't forget to subscribe so you see my next video. Thanks for being here. All right, let's get into it. All things contour. So, a little bit about Mascara Beauty's contours. In case you are new, there are, how many is that? 10, because there's one on this side. And, a lot of times I'm surprised that people don't realize, you guys, shadow is in a category all by itself. So you should never be color matched to shadow. Shadow is extremely gray and was designed only to be used on your nose where you might pull more red than the rest of your face. So shadow, nose, detail, contouring, only it's also good for brows as well but these are the main shades all right and i'm going to show you as many as i possibly can today different ways so we have walnut aspen ash olive am i going the right nope sorry stone olive henna brand new astoria where am I going? I'm going backwards. Astoria. <laughs> you guys, yeah, I keep moving the compact all around. Astoria Indigo Cola. Okay, so obviously my skin tone is not dark enough for cola. I love this as an eyeliner. It's a great cream eyeliner. You can also use it in your brows, but you guys, all the other ones I can use. Walnut is a rarity I find to be used because it is so light. Um, it doesn't show up on me at all. Um, so I, it's hard for me to show you that one. And it's so warm. To be honest, most people that are fair enough to wear walnut are uh, usually need Aspen instead. So there are people that can wear it, but it's rare. So I'm gonna show you all the other ones besides the lightest and the darkest one we have. And I'll show you shadow as well on my nose. So let's get into it. I'm gonna show you guys seven different ways. And I'm just gonna start lightest to darkest and I'm gonna show you all about placement. So actually, you know what? We're gonna start with the darkest one so you guys can see placement. And I'm gonna use my finger. Okay, 
Tool number one is your finger. If you're new to this makeup, or maybe you haven't got our brushes yet, which are a game changer by the way, try it with your finger first, okay? You just need to learn placement. And I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with the cheekbone, which is the scariest for everyone of where to start because the forehead and jawline are easy. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some on my finger so you guys can see it. Indigo is a neutral contour. You can use it, I've even seen the fairest of girls use this, okay? I do find that on some people it is hard to blend out though. So if you're having that issue, that's why. I am just gonna feel for my cheekbone, and this is why using your finger is great for beginners. And I'm just gonna pull it, and I'm gonna stop at the corner of my eye, okay? And I'm just gonna do that line. So if you don't know where your cheekbone is, take something like a pencil, roll it under it, and it's gonna be anywhere from the mid to the upper part of your ear, and you're gonna follow the line like you're going towards the corner of your mouth, okay? Key is don't ever go inside your marionette lines, those smile lines, okay? Looks like you have a mustache, not pretty, all right? But I like to stop at the corner of my eye, and because I want ultimate lift of my cheekbones, right? That's why we're adding dimension. That's why we're trying to get our cheekbones to look higher, or if we weren't blessed with cheekbones, it's gonna actually give you the illusion that you have those cheekbones. We're only playing with shadows here, so we're gonna add that sculpt and dimension with a shadow looking shade. This is why all of our contours are gray based. They're not gonna make you look orange or red like a bronzer would, okay? Um, it's not meant to be used like a bronzer. It's just gonna be added where we want that shadow. Now, if you are using a contour shade and it's pulling you red or orange in any way, it is too warm for you. So I'll go through each one and how it's warm. Like Walnut, the light one I said I can't wear, it's warm and light, which I cannot use warm contours because I have freckles and I have redness. And it's just gonna pull that redness out even more in my skin, which is not good. So Indigo's neutral. It does have red and cool tones. Um, so if it's pulling red on you, you might need a cooler contour. Okay, so that's it. You're gonna place it there. You're gonna stop around that side of your eye, okay? And then you're gonna blend. Super easy, super simple. I'm gonna show you the placement on the forehead and jawline as well, all with my finger so we know placement and then I'll show you how to use each one of our tools. So I am gonna go right along my hairline and I just, did not, I'm not used to using my fingers, guys. I'm gonna, this is like paint by numbers, okay? So you know your highlight goes anywhere your contour does not go. If you've checked out my one of my most recent videos, I contoured first and you can still see how much coverage you get from contour. So contour gives coverage just like highlight does, but if you need that additional coverage like I like, I highlight first, then I contour, and it's just gonna double up that coverage you get in those areas, okay? So then we're gonna go forehead. So forehead placement I feel is pretty easy. You wanna follow your hairline. Now, if you have a tall forehead, you can go down farther on your forehead to make that recede, okay? So anywhere you're placing dark, dark recedes, light brings forward. So we're highlighting, okay, to bring forward. We are making anything with shadows recede into the background. So I can go down farther because I have a high forehead. And I can also go all the way down to my temples because I have a, a wider forehead as well. So this, by going down low, by going down to my temples, it's gonna shrink and make my forehead look more narrow. Now, if you have a, a thin face, I recommend not going to your temples. I recommend staying just right there. So about mid-brow, just on, along your hairline there. 
if you have a short forehead, so if you have like, I call it a two finger forehead, whereas mine's like four, then you can barely use any. I would just go right along your hairline. You don't even have to contour your forehead if you don't want. This is all preference, okay? So preference of where you put it, but it can alter the look of your face shape depending on how you use it. Okay, so I'm gonna go kind of like that. And then I'm gonna go along my jawline. So again, a lot of people do not contour your jaw, but it can help disguise jowls. It can define your jawline if you don't have a very defined jaw and if you need that separation between your jaw and your neck. So I have a very defined jaw as it is, but I still contour under my jaw and blend it down my neck. That way I never have a disconnect between my face and my neck in color. It's gonna blend more seamlessly. So anytime you contour, I recommend starting to place the color where you're darkest first. So naturally you're gonna have the darkest part of your shadow on your, on your cheek up here by your ear, right? So that's why I start placing the color there and I pull here and see how the color naturally fades. Obviously you want this part to naturally fade as it goes into towards your face. The same thing goes with your jawline. I recommend back, back here by your ear first, okay? And then drawing that color up under. So I say push up, that is where you're putting it. If you put it here on the side of your face, you can kind of alter the way your jawline looks, but honestly, I don't because I feel like all it takes is one day where I'm not blending well enough and I can see I have contour on this side of my face there. For me, it's easier to just go under that jaw. Can you see it? Probably not. And place the color there and then blend it down. So, depending on how you like to blend, I usually blend as I go, which I'll show you when I get to the brushes, but you can, if you don't want, if you wanna just use your fingers, paint by numbers, and then blend with your perfecter, that is a possibility. Now, with using a contour as dark as indigo and just your perfecter, you're gonna be spending a whole lot more time blending than it would be if you just used a brush. So you can see it's already starting to blend that line a little, but my forehead's gonna take a lot more work. So I recommend grabbing any brush that has dense bristles because you need something dense in order to blend a contour. So I'm gonna grab just the 30 second, the round end, and I'm just gonna take that color and I'm gonna pull along the jawline and then down the neck, okay? So you can see how it's it, it blends in seamlessly. Okay, the next place that's easiest to blend is the forehead. So when you're going in blending the forehead, see how I didn't get it all the way up to the hairline? If you just start pulling that down, you're gonna have this line where your hairline is. So I say push up into your hairline, okay? And then pull down into your highlight. So you don't have any obvious lines. Okay, and then we've defined our forehead there. Okay, now the cheekbone is the hardest place to blend, but it shouldn't be hard. Our creams blend so easily together. So my recommendation is really getting a brush that you like. Okay, I'll show you how to do it with every brush, but my main concern with any blending is to not go in right where you applied it and start doing this motion. You're simply going to almost remove the product. It's gonna blend in completely with your highlight 
and it's not gonna look like you placed any color there. So I have a lot of people that are like, I can't see my contour. And usually it's because like the contour color is dark enough for your skin, but you're blending it away. You're blending it into your highlight where you can't even see it. So number one, never pull contour downwards to blend. Okay. You pull that color down here. It's going to shorten this area and it's going to bring your face down. It's going to drag it down and you're not getting a lift that we want. This is a push up bra for your face. We're wanting to always think up, think up. Okay. So my recommendation, once the placement is there is to take your brush and move it slightly above where you placed it. Okay. And just simply flick upwards. Okay. You're simply taking the top line of that contour and you're diffusing it upwards. Okay. You're softening it. Another way I love to do is simply again, moving it slightly up pressing. So these creams do blend out so well. Pressing is one of, it's probably actually my favorite way to blend. Okay. I get asked all the time how I do my contour and it's because I press it on, I move it slightly upwards and I keep pressing and see how that blends upwards. But now the bottom line is more defined. Now I like a defined contour. The longer you wear this makeup, the more you will like it defined. I promise you that, but I get it when you're first starting contour is a little scary. You're like, I got a shadow. I got a, I got a line on my face. So if that is too much for you, do the same thing. Don't pull down, but just press. Okay. Just lightly diffuse that line or grab your perfecter for the bottom part of that line and just simply pounce it. I'm not pulling with the perfecter. I'm pouncing it gently on the skin. Okay. And you can do the same thing if, if this area didn't get applied where it is going lighter as you go in, you can use either your highlight in that you applied highlight and kind of diffuse that color, blend it, move the contour where you want. If you blend it too much and you want to redefine it, use a little highlight, carve it back out. There is no mistakes with this makeup that can't be fixed because it's a cream. This is not set on your skin. It can still be moved around even if you got the wrong placement. If I go down too low, I can grab some highlight and move it. I can, I can do anything with these tools, with the brush, with the right brush that is made for creams and with this perfecter, there are no mistakes. So that is placement. That is a little bit on blending, but I want to show you guys how to blend with each of our tools, depending on which tools you have. So when it comes to placement for your main face contour, remember a three, okay? Along the hairline, under the cheekbone, under the jaw, and that's our main three for our face map. And I'll go into some detail contouring here in a minute. Okay, that was indigo. Let's go into Astoria and I'm going to show you my favorite brush first. I can't help it. I'm going to do it. Okay. So the detail hack I feel like is the easiest brush to contour with. Um, I know it's a personal preference and it's because I like a more defined contour that this wide end of the brush is by far my favorite my daily go-to, the one I always reach for no matter what. So I'm going to show you how using a brush, you can apply the makeup and how I like to dip in. So I've done an entire video in my Instagram highlights about how to dip into the product. And the reason is because I see so many people swiping in and then swiping it on their face and the line is uneven. It's not evenly distrib distributed. 
and then they're they're struggling more to blend. So I know some artists, and you saw, I did that with my finger before, and you can do that, but I feel like this is the easiest way to have the most consistent contour um, in order to um, make it faster. You get really fast at it, and if you just do the exact same way every time. So this is my personal favorite, my personal preference, just in case you're curious how I do it. So. I take my detail hack at an angle and I'm gonna go in with Astoria. Now this is a cool contour and this is one shade lighter than Indigo. And I pounce, I'm not swiping, I'm simply pouncing. And I got the color on half of my brush, okay? And the reason for that is because if I go in with this entire brush, that's pretty wide. Now I recommend this brush for anyone that has smaller features on their face. And I still recommend by far, if you have smaller features, just getting the color on half your brush so you don't have to worry about pinching it, getting a thinner line. My finger over here, my finger's pretty thin, okay? So this is pretty wide if it's not narrowed down some. So. Now, when I'm applying with a brush, I always press on the color instead of swiping, okay? So again, top of the ear, towards the corner of my mouth, starting up at my ear so it is darkest at my hairline, and I'm going to press, stopping at the corner of my eye. And I'm just pressing, and I'm just gonna keep pressing. And then once I feel like the color is all where I want it to be, do you see how it's already fading? I really don't have to do much blending at this point. And that's why I like this method because blending's the hard part. Applying it isn't, but if you apply it in the right way, you save yourself the hassle of trying to blend it out perfectly. So I then simply slightly lift and just keep pressing. And what I'm doing is I am keeping the bottom line more defined and I am pressing so that color evenly blends upwards, okay? Because remember, I still have a lip and cheek to apply from here up to here over it. And you always wanna keep your contour and lip and cheek connected to look the most natural. So I feel like contour by itself might not look super natural, but then once you apply that lip and cheek color, it just fades and then it goes into your illuminator and that's what gives you that gorgeous mascara glow that we all love. So that is how I do that. And if, and if I sometimes, we're all human, sometimes occasionally, you'll get where it looks like it's a little too harsh right there. And again, just grab another brush or use the same brush and simply feather, okay? You let your tools do the work for you, okay? Gentle, not harsh, not a lot of pressure, and, it, and these tools really do all the work for you. Okay, so I do the same thing if I'm using the brush at my hairline. I press it in and then I feather it up and down just like I used the last brush. And that is the first side of the detail hack. Let me remove this contour and we'll go straight in to the next side of the brush. Okay, so I removed it and I put back on my highlight. So hopefully I'm all evened out. If my face is red by the end of this video from removing my makeup so much, you're gonna know why. All right, so next is our brand new color, and it's called Henna. And this color is probably comparable to Olive in Darkness, so I would say a mid-toned, I guess I could show you, a mid-tone shade. Okay, so so far we've done Indigo, Astoria, and now we're at Henna. And Henna is mid-toned, but cooler than Olive. So if Olive, um, pulls you red because it is neutral and it's got those warm tones, then you'd love henna because it doesn't have those. 
So let me just double check, make sure I got the right one. Yes, I do. Okay, so I'm now gonna switch it over to the other side of the detail. And it's funny because when I first started wearing this makeup, this is the side I recommended to contour with. This was the side I loved to use. And the reason was, was because like this one, you can't, like I love this brush, I love it. It like cups that cheekbone perfectly, but this one, you can feel your cheekbone. So when you're starting out and you don't wanna use your finger to feel for it, you can literally feel with this end of the brush. And as you're learning placement, it makes it super easy to draw it on. So same thing, I pounce guys, I pounce into the shade, okay? Start at the ear and I'm simply dragging it down. Same placement every time, okay? So this I feel like reminds me a lot of I'm using my finger. It gives you a nice thin line. And again, this side is not gonna be the easiest to apply and blend with, but it's great for beginners to learn placement. And you can draw it on just like you would your finger everywhere and it's great because this end is one of my faves for nose contouring but draw it on then i recommend flipping the brush in order to blend so just like we blended before you can press you can flicker lightly feathering that upwards but again i like to pounce i'm a pouncer Okay, or grab that perfecter and blend out that shade. Okay, so that was fully the detail hack. Let's move on to the next shade on this side. And we're gonna go with probably most people's go-to, which is the 30 second hack. This is usually the brush most people start with just because it is the one brush that I say can do it all. If you wanna start with one brush, you can highlight, you can contour, you can lip and cheek, accent, depending on what coverage you want, depends on what side you want you want to use and how you use the brush. So if you need help figuring that out, just holler at me and I can tell you my recommendations. But for contour, some people have used this end. I, I don't like it for contour, I will be honest but this side is what it was designed for, okay? Now, if you compare these two ends, this one is a lot wider. To me, for my face shape, it gives me too wide of a stripe. So what I do, and I'm going to show you how I load my brush, you're gonna say, okay, Sarah, you've shown us enough times, they're all the same, and you're right. They are. When I found what works for me, when I tried everything else, I don't stop. So, at an angle, and I pounce, okay? And I get color on half of my brush. And that is Olive, which is my daily go-to if you've ever watched my stories. So, you can, if you don't wanna pounce, and you still are a swiper, by all means, you do you. But I do recommend pinching this brush to give you a thinner line and then either pouncing in it or swiping. So then when you press it on, it's not so wide. Now, since I pounced at an angle, I can then cup and it's only on half my brush. So I don't have to worry about squeezing it, which in my opinion is easier for me to apply it same thing and you can tell even this brush gives a white it just gives a more diffused look so the detail is going to give you more of a defined contour either end you use because of the straight line and because this is so detailed this brush automatically just diffuses because it is rounded like that Okay, so if you like a more natural contour, this might be your favorite brush. Like, I feel like I could go just like that 
without even blending because it's just, I like a dramatic contour. And once I put my lip and cheek on, it's gonna be diffused just fine. But same thing, press, press, press. This is one of my favorite ends of all the brushes to blend with. So it just makes it so easy. And the fact that this is on the other end to pull it and to just move it back in place. Super simple. Next brush. Okay, so that was Olive. I don't know if I said much about it. It's my favorite. <laughs> it's a great mix of both warm and cool tones. So it is neutral, but it has some warmth in it. So if you have redness on your cheeks, I won't recommend it because it's gonna pull out that redness. Um, so when it comes to warmth, there's one color I cannot really wear. I will show it to you guys anyway, but the next one is Stone, okay? It is still have a, it still has a lot more gray than our Bella bronzer is, so it's not a bronzer. I recommend Stone for one, if you don't have freckles like me, um, because it'll just blend, it just blends in with my freckles. It's the same color and it just doesn't work. But if you are a bronzer girl, and you love being super warm, but you don't wanna use both a contour and a bronzer, then I recommend it. I usually don't recommend it um, because if you do like that little bit of warmth, Olive overall works so much better on so many more people than Stone will. So that's what I have to say about Stone. Next. Okay, I'm gonna show the Buffy brush. So. Buffy is my favorite highlight brush right now. Ever since it came out, I can't stop using it. This is what I use to press on my highlights. But I don't usually recommend it as a beginner for contouring um, because I feel like you can place the color, but it's harder to blend with this brush than either of these two. That being said, it's not hard to use. It's just not as easy if you've never contoured before. Does that make sense? And maybe I don't like it because I can't pounce half of a brush, half of this brush into color. Just can't do it. It doesn't work. And you probably see a lot of people swiping this brush, but you know what? I'm not gonna. I'm still, I have not used stone in so long. We'll see if this color is dried out. I don't use this shade ever. Okay, so I pounced my color on the brush. Same thing with this brush. You're just, with this brush, maybe that's why I don't like it. I feel like it's harder. You can sweep up color on, but I still like to press it. Same general direction. Sorry if you, once I get into these colors, you're not gonna be able to see them as well. I'll try to put it on a little heavier because this shade is so warm on me. So, okay, placement is done. So if you're going to blend with this brush, I recommend moving it slightly up and doing the flick or you can press or a combination of both. If you are a minimalist and want one brush, but you love a full coverage look, you might love this brush. Once you get the hang of contouring with it, it's not difficult because you can also turn it at an angle and kind of use the tip of this brush to contour your nose. So really you can do, because of the the way this, this, the brush is angled, it does lead to a variety of uses, okay? I'm not saying it's a bad brush. I love this brush. It's actually one of my favorites. I still think detail's my favorite, but you know. Anyway, don't make me choose. So, Buffy, that's stone. It actually doesn't look too bad on camera, but in person, hmm doesn't look doesn't look too great okay next is ash which 
like I would say stone, olive, henna, and ash are all around the same mid-tone darkness, um, in my opinion. Um, ash is cooler, and I know henna is also cool, our new one, but they just have, let me see if I can swatch them. I will add swatches in of all of them so you guys can see them, but they just have different tones. And to me, it's very hard for me to describe. <laughs> They're both cool. This is more maybe green olivey, and this is more purpley. I mean, they're both cool. So this is henna and this is ash. So, cause I feel like this one looks more like my shirt. I don't know, maybe I'm not the best descriptive, but they're both cool. So they both don't pull red, which is the key. Okay, we've used three full brushes. Let's go in with the B squared. Now, you might think I'm crazy. I've shown how to contour with this brush before, but this is my all time favorite brush for mature skin because this end is amazing at highlights. You can buff it for um, a more airbrushed look, a more natural coverage. You can press it on for more full coverage and for mature skin. And you guys, if you just want one brush, because this side is amazing at blending and I could go on and on but this side you can contour with it. I wouldn't recommend trying this side, but this side is made for creams, therefore you can use it for our creams. So this one I for sure am going to pinch, okay? That right there is way too fat for a contour for my face shape. So I'm gonna pinch it, surprise, surprise, I am going to pounce it, okay? Let's see which side am I doing, I'm doing this side. It's kind of sometimes it's hard to pinch and apply across my body, but up at the ear. Again, I'm just gonna press it on. Look at that. Now this end is amazing at blending out because you can just simply go like this and it is so good at blending. Okay, or just press. This is like the softest brush, so I feel like it does it all. Okay, so that is the B squared. That is actually a blush side. And then when you apply your blush over that, it helps blend. And then you can go like this and apply your Bella and it all blends. I mean, I like this side way more than that side. And that was with my favorite brush. So again, you can go in and blend. So one of the things that's a really great um, hack not hack, but just good to know is that the the bronzer side of the B squared is great if you didn't use color corrector like I do and you're not layering shades, you're just, you know, applying your contour and you wanna blend it out, try this brush. You can apply Bella over it to blend it out or you can just simply swirl and blend. Like I'm already liking that more. Now I usually, you won't see me doing that because I I have to layer highlights in order to give coverage for my hyperpigmentation. But when you don't have to worry about that, sometimes you can leave your contour more harsh. You don't have to blend it so much with the brush. And then a lot of people like to apply Bella and blend their con in it, blend it in with their contour at the same time, and it saves them some blending. And it's really easy to just apply it over that and blend it out. So that's why I don't, I don't sweep and you kind of have to sweep in order to blend. This brush, this side is not made for pouncing, unfortunately. Okay, we are almost done. So I will be right back. Okay, my face is super red under here, but you can't tell because my magical mango color corrector is taking all the red away. So we have one last brush that you might have not thought of to contour with, but some girls swear by this brush for highlighting and contouring. Um, and it is the Power Powder Brush. Now, I'll have to admit, I don't really like this side for that. Um, I don't feel like it's 
quite dense enough because it moves more. I feel like the best one, the best brushes for contouring are denser so you can pounce it more. Um, but this side is cool the way it's angled. You can just press it right along that. So we're going to go in with Aspen. Aspen is actually neutral, but I feel like it pulls more cool than warm. And it is for my Ferris girls, but let's see if I can get this on here. I can wear it if I apply enough of it. So hopefully you guys can see it on camera because we are to our lightest shades now. And you can tell it's, it's too light for me. It's kind of pulling weird, but for the sake of the video, I will power through it. Okay. Cause it's a little, I don't even know. Probably doesn't translate on camera. Okay, so I'm just taking the angle of that brush and I'm doing the same thing, but I'm just following. You can feel your cheekbone with this brush. So it's another fun option. And then I'm just gonna lift and I'm gonna pounce. Now I don't feel like it's blending very well by pouncing with this brush. So you know what, let's just flip it over. And I'm just gonna flicker and I'm just gonna pounce with this side. So on camera, I don't think it looks too bad. In person, it looks too, is sallow the word I'm looking for? It just doesn't look right. So if you feel like your contour color is off, let me know, I can help you pick a new one. Not all contours are completely universal. Depends on your skin color. It depends on your skin um, undertones and your hair color and all your if you have redness, if you have hyperpigmentation, if you have freckles, like all those things come into play. Um, and some people have to try a couple before they find their right shade because it just looks off. Yeah, that one looks off. So, okay, we've made it through all seven techniques of applying six tools and our fingers and now i wanted to go in and i wanted to show you some detail contouring real quick so i mentioned before shadow is a detail contour made for your nose and i'm just gonna do a quick nose hack and i'm gonna show you my favorite brushes for doing that and really it kind of changes. So I showed you before, you can use the tip of this brush to do it. My favorite would probably be the detail or the blend and tap, which is an eyeshadow brush, but this gives you extreme precision, I guess you could say. Um, I used to use the multitasker. I feel like it's almost too precise to draw a straight line. <laughs> especially if you have shaky hands and you just can't draw a straight line to save your life. If you can't draw a straight line to save your life, the detail hack will be your brush. And I'm just gonna show you both ways, okay? So again, really think about where you're applying on the brush. It makes your life so much easier. You wouldn't go like this to use the edge of the brush, right? So just get that in and then touch your nose and draw a line, okay? You do the same thing with the pointed end, okay? And I sometimes use a combination of both because I can't really get in here real well with the straight. And then I like to go all the way down to the tip in like a triangle. So this is with the detail and I got a little messy there, but in order for you to see it on camera, I gotta lay it on thick. And then with the blend and tap, there's two ends. So this one is more flat on one end and then this one's rounded. I like to use the more flat one and I just go straight in to dip. Now, shadow is the creamiest of all of the contours. So I mentioned before, the reason I pounce is because I use olive daily. Olive is the driest. Olive is the hardest to get on your brush. 
and I found that pouncing was the easiest way for me to get the color on the brush. Shadow I would never pounce into, I just kind of wiggle into it because it is so creamy, it's almost, it's not as creamy as our highlights, but it's creamy and it's just made for your nose. So I do the same thing here, but you actually have to kind of draw a straight line. So I'm trying to get those two lines close together without touching. And then I do the triangle at the nose and then I follow that line all the way up towards my brow. And that is how you nose contour, right? So you would think that that's it, but that's not it. The key to a nose contour is the highlight. So. I have my contour on even though my cheeks are kind of uneven. <laughs> we won't go there. Um, but I never accent brightened. So let's go in with our brightener, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to finish up a nose contour. So my brightener of choice is Aura and I'm just gonna use the small end of the Buffy so I can press it in and show you guys. So what you do is you wanna press on your brightener all the way up to that contour line, okay? All the way under the eye and then back down to your nose, okay? That triangle right there is the money spot right there. Okay, make sure you keep those nostrils brightened because nose contouring is about the brightener, not necessarily contour. So I'm just gonna use that same shade. Now some people like to then go back in with the brush, like the other end, like the round end, and draw in. Okay, you wanna keep this stripe thin, and then you wanna go all the way up and feather it between your brows. What I like to do is I like to then brighten right there, right there, and right on my Cupid's bow, okay? So what I like to do is I like to kind of merge those two, like brighten all the way up right there. Can you tell a difference in my face? Talk about dimension, right? So then I can just use that brush and kind of fan this out into a triangle. Okay, press this in. And I can even start pressing my accent shade. Use that to clean up your eyeshadow. Press it to diffuse the edges if you need to. Our highlights can clean anything up. Okay. So then when it comes to the nose contour, you can either gently press it. Sometimes I like to use my finger to make that line less. And then of course, I always go in with my Barely Damp Perfector. And I remove all that excess brightener. Cause look at the difference between excess and not excess. Okay, so then a couple more things on contour real quick before I finish my perfecting my face and finally I'm done with my makeup. So I'm gonna show you what else you can use contour for. So I said before when I was showing you guys, here's cola is like a cream eyeliner. So using it with an angled brush, applying it on your lash line. You can have all of your stuff in one compact. You can even use this on your waterline if you like that look. And then I love Astoria in my brows. I already did my brows. And Indigo, I can use a variety of shades. Um, and then you can just comb them through to blend. I love the detail hack for making my lips look bigger. So let's just go in with a little henna 
and I just simply contour under my bottom lip, okay? Make sure it's not too obvious, pounce it out. And it makes my bottom lip look more downturned and larger. And that's a game changer. And then there's so many things you can use the multitasker brush for. I swear it could be its own video. Um, you can use this in to do eyeliner as well. You can use this in to do your brows as well. Um, I like both ends to line my lips with contours. So my I, I go back and forth which one's my favorite. I usually go with Indigo or Astoria. And let's try, let's do Indigo, okay? You can line it with the small end if you like more precision. I've even used the angled brush to line my lips. I find this end is the fastest, which if you know me, I'm all about efficiency. Okay, and indigo is really just works on anyone because it just gives a natural definition to the lips without being too dark and it gives a natural shadow to where it makes your lips look bigger, which win-win. Okay, and then you can apply your lip color. Let's see, I'm gonna go in with some love spell. With some illuminator in the center. And there you go. I'm gonna keep blending so I can show you what it looks like and I will probably even up my contour, but that is contouring guys contouring 101 the only brush from mascara i did not contour with was this <laughs> the blend and tap i can honestly say i've never used this to contour anything with um i bet you could use this in for under your lip for sure i bet it would work so hopefully that answered all of your contouring questions about placement. Don't forget to always perfect it all out so it looks like skin and not makeup and then set it all in place and you'll be good to go. If you have any questions regarding contouring or if there's anything you would like me to touch on that I did not touch on, I will answer in the comments below if you are ready to be color matched for this amazing game changing makeup line there is a questionnaire below so i know all of your makeup preferences so i can customize your color match just for you the link is in the description box below and yeah let me know if you guys like this thank you guys for being here and i love y'all